So we're here with Karen Coppett, one of our water conservation specialists at the Water District, mm -hmm. and we're at your house. Right. And we're at your house to show you show folks what a WaterWise house call actually looks like, and you're going to uh, let us uh, use your house today. Exactly, exactly. And and we want to invite people to sign up for this free WaterWise house call program. Mm -hmm. It's easy to do. The technician will come out to your home by appointment and look at your water use indoors and out. We can pan a little bit, show what we have here. This is a lawn in the front yard. And what are you going to do with this lawn? We are taking out the lawn and we are taking advantage of our landscape conversion rebate. Mm -hmm. We are going to take it out and put in beautiful, efficient landscaping. It's going to look great. I'm really excited. We're going to do a little dry creek sort of meandering <laughs> through it and lots of beautiful plants that will be beneficial to insects and butterflies and birds. And I'm so excited because quite frankly, mowing the lawn every week, not exactly my thing. We have our WaterWise house call technician here, Drew, and let's go talk to Drew. He's gonna walk us through some of the basics of uh, the house call program. So Drew, thank you for being here this morning. Hi, thanks for having me. And you're, you're with uh, ConserVision, which actually operates the program for us, the water district. Correct. And uh, so how do we start? What, do you, what are we doing here in the front? So usually we'll start in the front. Um, Typically, we'll go with the homeowner and we'll ask you for your water bill. You just look at me. <laughs> so, yeah, I was used to yesterday. Um, so usually, we just ask you for your water bill, uh, the homeowner for the water bill, so we can see how much water you're currently using. And then we'll look at your water meter today to get a reading and then compare consumption, say, over the past month usage and also check for leaks. Okay. And then, uh, then we'll go into the inside of the house and work through. We'll check out the efficiency of your showers, your faucets, uh, your toilets and then also your washing machine and check your water heater and make sure there's no leaks there. Okay, so first we're gonna go to the water meter over here. Each city is a little different with how their meters are and um, how their covers are, but you can just pop that open. Sometimes it's a little cover. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll look at the actual water meter itself. Couple spiders. And yeah, so yeah, you wanna be careful. Sometimes there's uh, some, some things crawling under there, but uh, the main thing is when you're looking at the meter, you'll have the, um, 100 cubic feet with the white background there. And right. so you can actually take the reading and then we'll write that down um, as the customer's today's reading. And then you'll have your last reading from the water bill that you'll provide. And then we can, uh, I'll write this out and give you a copy of the, the consumption later. Uh, but basically we'll check for leaks. So there's a little triangle sometimes or a blue wheel or dial, and that will be a leak or flow indicator. Whoa. So if that's uh, leaking, uh, if, if something's uh, running or, or water's flowing, it'll start spinning. Wow. And uh, yeah, so it's very, very easy to read and also very um, good to check your house, or whole house for leaks. Mm -hmm. and so then, it, lo yeah. it looks like good news. It looks like good news right now. So you don't see, I don't see any movement. And if there was, then we would definitely uh, check as many things as we can in the house. Okay, so we're in Karen's lovely bathroom thanks <laughs> <laughs> and uh we're gonna check jews gonna check the flow rate and the faucets see if they're using more water than typical and then we're gonna do the same with the shower yep let's do it all right so, yeah, so you got a handy dandy little bag here mm -hmm. and uh, it'll it has a little uh, lines of the gallons per minute so you run the faucets on fully on for five seconds okay. and then it'll fill up to the line and you'll see where we're at so we'll try this one out all right Looks like we got an aerator in there. Some people don't have an aerator, and that's definitely a big waste, right, Karen? Right, and that's an inexpensive addition to a uh, faucet. Put a nice aerator on there, and uh, you can cut your water use by a significant amount. So we're looking for about one and a half gallons per minute, and it looks like it's just on that, so kind of about where this line is. So oh, okay. Are, the lowest it shows us is two, so I know usually about a little bit under there is about one and a half. So this is what we would recommend, or, or we would change out with our aerators, we have free free ones we give out. So if this is old or missing, I'll put it on for you if the customer wish, wishes, and, and then you'll have save water. All right, and Karen. And there's no charge at all. So far, so good. We'll check the shower next. Looks like a low flow shower head, right, Karen? Yeah, yep, should be. Things are on uh, lower flow. Just you, you can just tell. Just well, at least like by experience. But <laughs> but the proof. We got the proof with the bag. So you're just counting five seconds in your head there? Yeah. You can, uh, 
sometimes you can, if I had a partner, I would have, use a stopwatch, but I have a pretty good in my head. So this one looks like it's just about two gallons per minute. So that's where we also recommend our uh, showers mm -hmm. to be, to be a more of a water saving. Typically, um, most of the new showers will be two and a half gallons per minute in the stores. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you're in the store buying one, you can look for a lower flow rate, so two or one and a half. Uh, we provide the two gallon per minutes, and it also has a stop start switch. So if you want to save water while you're so um, lathering up, you can even save more. All right. Well, I think your bathroom's looking good. Thanks. So let's move on. All right. <laughs> During a house call, you would check for leaks by putting yeah, so, a dye. Yeah. So we'll we'll take up the top here, and then sometimes you'll get the dates of the old toilets or just oh. see how it's working, and then also. Um, I'll listen to hear if I hear this float or fill valve. If you hear that filling while it's just sitting there, then you usually can tell you have a leak. Yeah. And the flapper or, or the seal around there is bad. Um, so definitely for homeowners, uh, just listen to hear if your toilet's running, making noise, you know it's probably leaking. Mm -hmm. So that's really, it's the easiest thing, but you can also use the dye. So you just put this in the tank here and it'll, it'll dissolve. Mm -hmm. So it's a little blue pill yeah, that so just a little, couple little puts some ink in the water. Toxic. It's fine. And then it just sits in there. And then you'll wait to see if it shows up in the bottom, um, in the bottom bowl. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then you know it's not leaking. If it does, then you know you, you have a leak somewhere. And you so. carry with you some flappers for a typical toilet? Yeah, typical toilet. This one, it, it wouldn't work on. It's a larger flapper size. Mm -hmm. We have them for most of the, most of the toilets um, from probably 2005 before. The new designs are larger now. Yeah. So. But we do carry them for most toilets, it'll fit. So just and in case. If you don't have a toilet like this, if you have one of those old ones, three and a half gallons, even more, or whatever, yeah, even more. you can look at our rebate program. We will actually help you get, get one of these good high efficiency mm -hmm. toilets. And they actually flush very nice, the new designs on most of them are even better yeah, than the old yeah. ones. So right. I recommend them. <laughs> Previously people were concerned about the efficiency or effectiveness of the toilet, but these ones work really well. Yeah, you don't have to flush twice for the new designs. So All right. that's good. So we're here in the laundry room here, and we you have also a, high, looks like you got a high efficient uh, high efficiency uh, washer. Well, it's washer, uh huh, exactly. And this isn't just uh, energy efficient; it's also water efficient. And although it's a top loader, some top loader models qualify for a rebate. Most high efficiency clothes washers, though, are front loaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, and you'll notice on your old, um, older or, or not as efficient washers, you'll have the top loader style usually, and it has the um, <clears throat> The uh, agitator in the middle, yeah. so it'll and it, you'll fill up that whole water basin pretty much. Mm -hmm. So these newer style will will wash in a little bit different manner and not fill up all the way, mm -hmm. um, but still get your clothes clean. So, or the front loader style, which a lot of people go to with the rebates. And uh, yeah, remind me how much of a rebate is uh, are people eligible for in our county? Um, so now uh, the one I recently saw was um, it's gone down through PG&E fifty dollars, and then if you buy the most energy efficient, it's a uh, hundred and. 200. Is it 200 now? Yeah, it's all it's up, up to 200, which is amazing. So, yeah, so if you get the most, the most efficient, then up to 200. Yeah. Um, and a little bit less efficient, you'll still get a rebate, just not quite as much. So. Right, exactly. So there's one thing that we could recommend for you, Karen. Yes, there is. <laughs> and that is yeah. that this, this water, although it's not using much, we uh -huh. could actually uh, offer you a rebate to install a gray water system where the the, the water used water from this washer could uh -huh. be diverted into your yard into our yard yeah it's the gray water laundry landscape program we offer a 100 dollars rebate mm -hmm. for it and you it's uh it's a pretty cool thing and it's actually been around for a little while we just started the rebate program mm -hmm. and my washer is in a good spot because it's near uh uh, the outside wall mm -hmm. so all we'd have to do is direct the water um, and you have a switch so mm -hmm. if you're washing something that's really you know dirty. really particularly dirty you want to send it down uh, to uh, the sanitary sewer mm -hmm. but otherwise you just have it go out into your garden and water your um, your plants out there mm -hmm. and it's a really neat program okay. and I know we got a lot of uh, requirements or guidelines on yes. our website so don't just rush out and do it contact us first and get fill out the application. That's exactly right. You can either call our hotline or go to valleywater.org and all the details are there. All right. Okay, let's go outside. Let's right. see what you can do out there. Okay, we're out in the backyard and we're looking at the landscaping controller. So what do you what do you do with the controller, Drew? 
So the ear gauge controller, will, um, I'll start here by looking at it, see if it's on or off right now. So it's in the auto run position. Mm -hmm. And then the, the main thing for these, which does create a lot of problems in regards to water consumption, high water consumption, mm -hmm. is the irrigation controller, um, and also leaks too while it's running. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is to check the date, um, all the settings, so the when the irrigation timer turns on, the start time. Mm -hmm. So you wanna see how many start times there are and what time it's running. And I can adjust that for you or for the customer if they wish mm -hmm. to change the time if it's running at night or if it's running in the early morning. And typically we'll recommend as early morning as possible, close to the middle of the night to reduce evaporation and get your most um, efficient watering mm -hmm. without wind as well. Yeah. Um, so then we'll also look at how many minutes each zone or station is running. So mm -hmm. if you have lawn, if you have some low water use plants or maybe flowers and see how, much, how many minutes those are running and I'll note that down. And then the next thing is how often the timer is running. Mm -hmm. So this one is running just three days a week right now. And so, um, and that's usually probably a, maybe a spring setting or fall setting depending on the area you live. Mm -hmm. Some people might do only once or twice depending yeah. on the plants, so. And normally, we're, we're doing this in January, normally yeah. you'd be able to turn that yeah, completely I usually off. Say, I usually say here, maybe I'll adjust it for you for upcoming spring and, I'll, and just leave it off because mm -hmm. it's raining. Mm -hmm. But it's been a weird, uh, obviously the drought this, this season, so. It, you can maybe let it run just maybe once or twice a week if you feel like plants or lawn needs it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can try to keep it off as much as possible. Yeah. But and then, so yeah. So what's the verdict for Karen? Do you think we're uh... actually you could turn it off because yeah. I'm replacing my lawn. Yeah, let's so. not water that lawn anymore. <laughs> yeah. So at the same time, yeah, she's not going to need to water. So usually we can turn that off or maybe leave a little. You can always turn off certain sections if you don't want to water that section or if I find a broken. The other thing I'll do is turn on the irrigation from the timer and we'll look at the each zone visually to see how everything's working mm -hmm. and if there's a leak. And if there is a leak, I'll turn it off for them for the time being until it's fixed if mm -hmm. they wish. Um, so that's another thing we can do as well, All just right. to check your irrigation system if you don't know how to. Mm -hmm. So so that's probably one of the most valuable things that you do is to leave the resident with a watering schedule that, mm. that will work for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then we'll leave you a, a watering schedule, how we would recommend it. Mm -hmm. And obviously I'll ask everyone first, you know, some people want to water more, some people are happy with cutting back their watering a lot more than it was set mm -hmm. currently. So um, I'll make sure that everyone, you know, they're, they're satisfied with that as well. Do you find that most people are watering more than they really need to? I think so. It's a little bit skewed because we do get a lot of calls in the summer for high water bills, mm -hmm. and I find that someone has turned up the the timing and days, mm -hmm. you know, every day for 20 minutes, and that's just you know overkill for lots of things, mm -hmm. depending on the area. Yeah. But um, so I do I do find that quite a bit actually for for this um, this house call mm -hmm. program is, is a lot of overwatering. Mm -hmm. So, all right, I think we uh, we've covered the the main yeah. things about the the house calls. Yeah. So thank you, Drew, for showing us around thank you for allowing us into your home and i think you scored an a plus <laughs> good job <Woo>! <laughs> okay well thank you both thanks thank you